left for our trip, we had to get, whole, get a whole bunch of stuff in order. We had to get our travel insurance, visa, our malaria pills, and our flu shot. And then we were good to go. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> and we went immediately to the ATM. Uh, we took out 50 US dollars and we suddenly became millionaires. And uh, before we left, we had read all the, you know, guides about how not to get ripped off by a taxi cab. And we got ripped off. But don't worry, we got it all on tape. $30 to go okay. where? It's like three miles? How much? How much? It's only three miles. How much? I, I don't know, three miles is like 10 bucks. Here, let's go over here. Yeah. That's still cheap. Well, how much is it? We were supposed to pay 60,000 dong and we ended up paying 500,000 dong, which is a difference of $22. And this right here is the hotel that we stayed in. So excited to stay in the Continental Hotel in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City. It was a big journalist hangout during the French Indochina War. Quiet American by Graham Greene takes place at the Continental, and there's also a movie featuring Brendan Fraser. Awesome to see him in something other than George of the Jungle. We found a place that looked awesome, and we had some pho, and it was delicious. Not something that we're used to eating for breakfast, but obviously in Vietnam, it's common to eat for breakfast. We met some good friends, Andy and Mimi, and then their uh, cousin and mom at the Rex Hotel rooftop bar. It's over, <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> went to the Temple Club for dinner, which was absolutely gorgeous and kind of hidden in this building. You didn't really expect the restaurant when you walked in. It was really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's banana. It's banana, banana. We met up with our tour guide, Ben, who was awesome. And he took us to the Coochie Tunnels. And basically, they were built in the 1940s. There's 75 miles of tunnels. It's completely impressive. They're so narrow and so claustrophobic. I don't know how anyone could run in the tunnels and fight a war from the tunnels. But obviously, after seeing the tunnels, we Completely just impressed by that infrastructure. There you go. All right, now you, now you gotta hold on to this. Put this over your head. And then, uh, there you go. Now you gotta go down. Go down. Keep going. You gotta hide. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Better leave here. Go into the bunker. Yeah, the air holes to keep it ventilated.
Yeah. A little bit of claustrophobia going on. Uh, a little bit. So we started over there and we just went under the ground through here. Really crazy traps and like torture devices that they used during the Vietnam the Vietnam War. And so here's a few of those traps and they're pretty scary. Maybe we spy this thing in the body. Oh my god. Oh, oh, come here, here. 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 Oh, Behind a trap in the door. Let's see, see that the house of jungles, the, the hot GI is happy. They think they can live there. After they keep the door open, the door. when the door open, the trap fell down like this. Sometimes this one attacked the jacket. Fell away the jacket. Sometimes this one, they push the hand like this. Stop moving. Oh. No, just hook them in the end. Yeah, put in the end. So. Take a smoke bar away from the kitchen room. They build a smoking bunker. I have smoke. Okay. It mm -hmm. has smoke from here under the sky, on mm -hmm. top, up to the sky. Right. Enemies recognize where they are exactly. They need a smoking bunker, smoking bunker far away from here, about 20 or 30 meters. Divide four or five direction. Now, smoke come cook right here, come through this one, this one, this one, this way. Divide the smoke. And this, they make a lot of smoking bunker. They cover the chimney with the leaf. They divide the smoke. And so they have to cook at midnight. They finish about five o'clock in the morning. So that is that picture above you. Oh, hold on. Okay, so on the way back from the Cushy Tunnels, we stopped at the Michelin um, tree plantation where they actually, um, where rubber is harvested from the trees. And it's pretty fascinating to see. Um, I had- Trap the bow. Yeah. To trap the bow until afternoon to come back here to take the shaft from this bow. Cool. One tree can chew cut, they can chew part of this. One bow about half meter. One have a half meter up the half meter of rubber. They shot it. Mekong River Delta, which was by far the, my favorite part of the trip. And the Mekong River Delta is just absolutely really cool. It's a floating market. We had that I just bought for $2 and my sunglasses and I brought them $2. This is Andy's awesome hat. Marlboro man. <laughs> on turnips and sweet potatoes and if you want to buy the stuff, you got to just board their boat and then you buy it. It's the floating market. That's how they go shopping with the boat. kinds of stuff you can buy in the floating market. Can smell, can smell, not so stinky. Can smell it. Yeah, I like smell. I smell it. Ew. Not so stinky. No, oh. I do. All right, you delve in. Cool. Yeah, that is disgusting. <laughs> it looks like dough, almost. Okay, what the heck? Should I just eat it? Yeah, just dude, do it. it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you yeah. Just go for it, Sherry. Come on, we're doing it. Well, this part out needed. Yeah. Oh, Ready? Yeah, on this. <laughs> yeah, now watch what's going on here. So this one doesn't have a, a pit, I don't think. Uh, not, uh, not also, but I don't eat a nut. No. no. Not. It does have a pit. Oh, what? Oh, that's another one. You just chew it? You eat around you the, the pit. Whole, no, it, eat it, around it, it, the pit. Oh. Alright, so the way that they make the candy is they start over here. Uh, no, it it, 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 come over here, please. 
But nowadays it's about feet. And they get it in the strips. And then they cut it up into little pieces. They wrap it in the wax paper. <laughs> Okay, so after the floating market and then the, the land market where we learned about candy and rice, we got into these small little boats that were paddled for us and we went down some small canals and we ended up at someone's home, which was really cool because it was a farm and we learned how they harvested fruit. I mean, literally there's fruit everywhere. And then we sat in this really cool pavilion and they made us lunch and it was absolutely delicious. We had no idea where we were. Oh, we should have had those beers later. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you have to row a boat now? I don't know where we are, but here we are. Food. Where are we? We're in the jungle. fish off. Oh god, that's spiky. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like not spike myself. Yeah. Okay. Roll mm -hmm. quick enough. I didn't roll quick enough. Uh, okay. oh, it's all right. It's still pretty good. Off. Yeah, it's still going to be fun. Roll. And then it looks like Jackie's. Uh -huh. So Halong Bay is supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, the only issue is that now it's extremely polluted and it attracts so many tourists since it was... Um, deemed a world UNESCO site. So it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, we were also there right after a lot of flooding, so the the water was not as blue supposedly as it usually is. Um, but anyway, we went on a junk boat, and junk boats um, are, it's, it doesn't mean that it's junk, it's just it's the type of a boat that you go on. But this boat that we went on was pretty junky. And so you get fed on the boat, it was actually a good meal, but then um, kind of you stop um, at some of the different islands and uh, we went up to the top of the boat and it was just really funny because the floorboards were so scary they were all broken. So just in case something bad happens to this deck they just want to say that there's a maximum of 12 people on the sun deck and we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 on the sun deck. We're gonna, we're going down. <laughs> so we're definitely going down. For the trip, uh, this is the really one and only part of the trip where we actually purchased a, a section of an actual tour. The others were kind of just day tours. We hired a guide to take us around the city. So we went with Intrepid Tours and we took the night train to Sapa. Sapa is kind of this ethnic area in the very north of Vietnam near the China border. Um, so it's really neat because all of the ethnic people live there. It's still kind of very well rural and preserved. Um, so it was kind of neat to see that area. So anyway, we went with Intrepid and they kind of purchased all these train tickets for us. So here is... Uh for two of you. Okay. All right. Number cool. two and number four. So probably one up, one down. Okay. And uh, in Vietnam, I think normally the men stay up top and the lady at the bottom. I don't know how it's your country. Uh, I like it on the bottom. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we got that on tape. So <laughs> Hanoi là trái tim của tổ quốc Việt Nam. Ba Đình là trái tim Hà Nội. Two and four, right? Nơi đó có ngôi nhà sàn sàn sĩ của Bác Hồ với ao cá, vườn cây, bốn mùa, đông hoa cây trái. Nơi đó. So we've been traveling all night on this train, and it's uh, it's been pretty bumpy. And this train is pretty old, but it's been about a nine-hour uh, uh, train ride to stop up. And uh, they have us on these sleeper cars. And um, the train in uh, number seven. It's pretty old and it's pretty bumpy. So we're gonna take a look around. Here's the bathroom.
that, but it was just a kind of a really cool atmosphere. It felt like we were in a big ski town. It's kind of the atmosphere that it kind of gave off. So anyway, what we did was we uh, hiked from Sapa to several small towns nearby. Um, so for instance, Lao Chai was a small village that was near Sapa. So the second day that we were there, we hiked to Lao Chai. But it's interesting because there's a lot of uh, women and children who dress in their ethnic kind of garb and they follow you for miles. And basically they hike in the very morning um, to Sapa and they follow the tourists to their village and then they're there in their village in the evening. So hold my hand, i walk with you, my dear. This dies Big uh, cooking tour, uh, which was through the Hanoi Cooking Center, and they took us on a street market food tour, and we experienced a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, that was by far my favorite part of the trip. We um, went through this market, and we just saw all this, like, really exotic, really cool food, and also just very fresh food. Ryan made us rent a 